All right, guys, welcome to Last Take. This is the MLB 2020 to 2021 MLB free agency uh, edition. Uh, we're going to make some predictions about where we think some of the top free agents are going to go. Uh, starting off, um, I just want to say make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to Last Take. Uh, do it however you want. All you got to do is click the red button under this video. It says subscribe. That's all it takes. Um, so to start it off, uh, we're going to go with the – Probably the biggest free agent. I mean, there's a few big ones, but uh, this guy is coming off a Cy Young year. Uh, Trevor Bauer. Um, Nick, where do you think he's going to land? I'm torn between two places. So I, I think he's either going to go to the Angels or the Mets. Uh, the Angels miss out on Garrett Cole a year ago. Their pitching staff is just dreadful. You know, they've got some guys that could hit on offense. Um, you know, he would be in L.A., if he were there, which I think he would enjoy that kind of market, even though the Angels are the, obviously the secondary team in town to the Dodgers. Um, the Mets make a lot of sense to me, too. Now that he, you know Steve Cohen has his money, I think Trevor Bauer, he's already come out with a YouTube video saying how he thinks Steve Cohen's doing a great job. He likes that Cohen's outspoken as an owner. He's outspoken as a player. Uh, so another place he can get paid, another place that needs a starting pitcher. So I, I'm torn between those two spots. I think ultimately he'll be a Met because I think that he'll look at the Angels, he'll look at the Mets, probably get a similar kind of contract off from both places, but the Mets have a chance to legitimately contend where I don't think the Angels do anytime soon. Right. So I agree with a lot of those points, mostly in the fact that I think he wants to get paid. I think he likes the ownership aspect. Um, for me, it was between the Mets and the Dodgers. Um, I read something the other day that, Trevor Bauer wants to be a part of a team that's very forward thinking in terms of analytics. Um, I'm not sure that's the angels, especially with Joe Madden. Um, I think he found a lot of problems with the Cubs um, because of that. And I think he's kind of stuck in the old baseball way um, where he likes to do things his way. And I don't think a player like Bauer would gel well with uh, Joe Madden out in uh, Anaheim, but I, I do think that he could go to the Mets because he does like the ownership. They're going to give him a lot of money. I think they're going to respect him. He's going to be a part of a great rotation, but my pick is the Dodgers. Um, he wants to pitch every four days, and the Dodgers have a very, very flexible rotation with a lot of really good arms there, and I think that's the one place. Um, I mean, the Mets have a good rotation too, but, I mean, they are very injury prone, as we've seen in the past, especially with Syndergaard coming off Tommy John. Uh, Stroman coming off an injury, uh, who knows what Matt is, and you know, the ground's a stud, but you know, he's a given. Um, so I think the Dodgers had the most flexibility in their rotation where Trevor Bauer can pitch every four days. Um, and you know, maybe they can give him extended rest if he does feel like that's you know, it wears him out throughout the season. He wants to put in 40 starts in a season, which is crazy. Um, but I feel like that's the place that's going to give him the money that he wants, it's going to give him the advanced analytics that he wants and it's going to give him the uh game started per year that he wants so I, my pick is the dodgers yeah that makes a lot of sense too yeah so you got i got dodgers you got mets right mets. yep yeah all right so i guess we'll see what happens but i mean that's going to be one of the biggest free agency, free agency signings of the year for sure uh moving over to the second big one uh there's like a top i'd say there's like a top tier like a top four Top four or five, um, and the second in that tier is uh, Springer. Uh, George Springer, formerly with the Astros, could go back, but who knows. Um, I feel like he definitely kind of wants to get away from that whole cheating scandal, prove that he's, you know, better than that, because I think he's kind of – he proved this year that he is a really good hitter with or without uh, cheating. Uh, so I, 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 I saw a rumor the other day that he is in serious talk with the Blue Jays, and the more I thought about it, the more I think that that's actually a great fit. The Blue Jays outfield right now is Biggio, Guriel, Jun Guriel Jr., uh, Randall Grichuk, and Tiasca Hernandez. Um, I mean, those guys are good. I don't think any of them are elite. Maybe uh, Guriel could be, Biggio could be. But I think Springer could make that team very dangerous, um, putting him as bad at the top of the lineup. And I think that – they know that too, and I think that they're going to take a chance on him. And I think they're going to give him the money that he deserves. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with you. I think he wants to get away from Houston for sure. Um, as a Yankee fan who nobody hates the Astros more than I do, Springer was always kind of the one that I 
I don't want to say it felt bad for, but I just didn't have the same amount of hatred for him just because he never spoke up. These other guys would kind of try and defend it or deflect. Like, how many times do we hear Altuve or Bregman or even Verlander just say stupid shit in the past two years about it? Um, but not really Springer so much. So I do think he wants to get away. Uh, he's from actually this area. He's from Connecticut. Um, and I do think the Blue Jays are going to be aggressive. We've seen them link to Springer. We've seen them link to DJ LeMahieu. Uh I feel like a total fraud to be Yankee fan for making this the second pick in a row, but I think Springer's going to be a Met. They don't have a center fielder. Uh, you know, they're pretty, even with Cano, they're pretty set at infield considering they have Jeff McNeil to play second. They still have Rosario there. Uh, you know, they have Jimenez now who's shown he's a good player. J.D. Davis plays third. And I think that they're going to be players as well for either Lindor or Arenado. Um, so I don't think they go after DJ. I think that they say, we need a center fielder. Brandon Nimmo's not going to cut it. George Springer's one of the better center fielders at the open market in the past few years, and I think he's a Met as well. All right. I don't. I. Yeah. I, I had him uh, going to the Mets as my second pick, so I. I could see either happening. I just. I would like to see him not as a Yankee fan, but I think it would be kind of cool to see the Blue Jays because I think they are a cool team. Minus mm-hmm. my get rid of my Yankee bias, but I think they're a cool team. That would be cool to see. Them. Yeah, that lineup is scary. I think they are going to add a veteran to it, but we'll get to him later. Uh, the next one is JT Real Muto. Uh, I'm, I'm piggybacking off of you here. I'm going, I think he's a lock to go to the Mets. Um, they need a catcher. They need a big free agency signing. And based off my past two picks, um, they haven't gotten one. Uh, and they need, they are going to pay JT Real Muto whatever he wants, whatever he wants to catch for that team for the next four to five years. I think you're going to get him, give him a longer contract than you're supposed to give a catcher. So. Right. So since my first two picks were guys going to the Mets, I don't think they land all three of the top free agents this year, despite how much money Steve Cohen has. Um, So I actually have him going to the Washington Nationals. Uh, This is a team that really, you know, coming off the World Series in 2019, took a huge step back last year. You know, part of it, you know, injuries, COVID, you know, Anthony Rendon leaving, what have you. Um, I think that they're a team that wants to contend still. They've got some money to spend, and I think that, you know, they need a catcher, and they're going to go get uh, get the best one in the league. I could see that. Who's who's their catcher last year? Suzuki, right? Suzuki? Still Kurt Suzuki, right? Yeah, I, I think it was, yeah. I know that's that's who it was when they won, but I don't know who it was last year. I'm, I'm assuming it was Suzuki because I remember him getting re-signed, but I don't know if he got hurt or anything. Yeah, I didn't watch a ton of Nationals baseball this past year considering yeah. how terrible they were. But regardless, though, they could use a catcher to make that, you know, kind of bring him back to that World Series level. Listen, at the end of the day, any team in baseball can use a JT Real Muto. It just depends who's going to pony up the money to actually sign him. Yeah, that's fair. So now uh, I think the one that everyone wants to know about, uh, I think the fourth level in this – or the fourth, the fourth person in this top tier is DJ LeMahieu. And I, str- I strongly believe he's going to resign with the Yankees. Um, I didn't even pick another team for him because he said he wants to be a Yankee. I don't think this is a Patrick Corbin situation where he says he wants to be a Yankee and they don't give him, uh, you know, what he thought he was going to get. Um, I think the Yankees are going to give him exactly what he wants. Um, and he's going to be respectful and not ask for more. I think it's going to be a, all right, we're going to give you five years because you want five. We'd rather give you four. We'll give you five. We'll give you like 20, four to 26 a year, something like that. And we'll call it a day. Bing, bang, boom, done. So I'm torn on this one. Here's the thing. I'm obviously a huge Yankee fan. I want DJ back very badly, but I do understand there is a market for him. I mean, the guy's coming off back to back top five finishes in the MVP race. You know, he puts the bat on the ball. There's not a lot of hitters like him. He can play second base at a gold glove level, play third and first as well. So he's versatile. Uh, seeing the Dodgers have interest in him, the Blue Jays, I mean, God forbid, maybe even the Mets, if, if Steve Cohen wants to swoop in and really stick it to Yankee fans right away. Uh, but I do think DJ comes back. I think the reason DJ comes back is because Hal Steinbrenner knows that he's going to have a mutiny on his hands if he lets DJ walk. Like, the, the to make fans feel at peace with DJ leaving, he would have to go out and trade for a Lindor and bring in someone else. Like, it's just fiscally more responsible for him like, forget from a baseball standpoint, just from an ownership fan perception standpoint, if you re-sign DJ LeMahieu and make a few other minor moves, I think most Yankee fans will look at it as a, as a somewhat successful offseason. Just like last year, how, you know, he had to let guys like Dellen and Didi walk, but he brought in Garrett Cole, so no one cared. So I think he knows 
the one move he needs to make is DJ LeMayhew. Uh, I am worried. I hope the Yankees have to at least go to four because I do believe someone's going to give him four years. I don't know if anyone goes to five. Um, I'm hoping that if it does get to that point, then the Yankees honestly just do it, or maybe yeah. they could just you know figure out the you know the AAV, kick that up for the four years, and convince him to stay. I do think he likes being a Yankee. I genuinely think like think he's not a guy that's looking to go out and you know be a be a superstar somewhere else and get paid. I think he likes winning. I think he likes the organization. I think he wants to stay. And I do think at the end of the day, Hal gets it done. Yeah, I agree. Um, so our pick for both uh, Lemayhews. Or uh, is the Yankees? So yeah. now I think we're leaving the top tier of the free agents. I mean, you could have a different opinion on this, but I don't think he's in the top tier. Is Marcelo Zuna a uh, great hitter, but he cannot defend worth shit. Um, he's actually a very bad defender. So what I think is going to happen is he is going to wait until the DH is universal, um, until that's like that's like official. Because I think I mean that'll probably happen at some point this off season. But until that's official, I think he's going to wait to see. Because, I mean, that's just going to extend his market because I think he's a DH. But right now, that leaves him kind of stuck in the in the AL. And he's played in the NL his entire career. Um, so I think he wants to stay in the NL. I think he wants to stay with the Braves. Um, but that's not going to happen until the DH is universal. So my pick right now is pending until uh, the DH happens. Yeah, no, that's a good point. I think he definitely does wait until there's a verdict on the DH or not, because I think certain teams are either going to not pay him at all or not be willing to give him as much, depending on if there is or isn't a DH this year. Um, I'm just going to say he stays with the Braves. I yeah. think, you know, what he did for their lineup this year, you know, as formidable as it was and coming within one game again another World Series, was in large part due to Marcelo Zuna. Um, I think that they let Donaldson walk you know, the year before because they thought that, you know, his value was going to be, you know, he wasn't going to be worth the contract that he ended up getting from the Twins. Uh, I think that they keep him around. I think it would be a mistake to let him walk defense or not. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, but I think that in terms of his free agency and what he wants, I think he's going to want to drive the price as much as possible. Mm -hmm. um, this is probably his, I think he's going to get like a two-year deal. So it's maybe one of his last two or three times in free agency. Um, so he's going to try to drive that price as much as he can, probably wait for the DH to happen, just so he can get those AL teams on it and maybe drive it up another half a mil or something like that. But, I agree. Uh, next is another Yankee favorite, uh, Tanaka, Masahiro Tanaka. Um, my pick, again, he stays with the Yankees. Um, and not for the reason that other teams don't need starting pitching. It's just I think Masahiro is a guy who prefers comfort. Um, the Yankees are very good at taking care of his arm. Um, when he, he never had to get Tommy John, he was able to get the care he needed when, uh, you know, he was going through all those elbow issues and the Yankees were very patient with him. You know, nothing ever happened with his contract. Um, and I think that he, that's going to go a long way to him signing another good deal with us, um, you know, come this, come this season. So I, I think he stays with the Yankees uh, based, on the, based on the aspect of comfort and mutual respect. Yeah, I'm in agreement with you there. You know, he's been a Yankee for seven years. It's all he knows in America is being a Yankee. Um, you know, I think that he is going to want to stay with the organization. Like you said, it's taking good care of him. You know, he likes the fans here, you know, gets to pitch in the postseason every year, which we can tell, you know, he's a big game guy. I know he wasn't great in 2020, but he is in general a big game pitcher. He lives for that. You know, we saw it back in Japan. I honestly think if he leaves the Yankees, it's to go back and pitch in Japan. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, if someone really blew him away with an offer, then maybe he signs with, I don't, I don't know that it would be Toronto or, or who, someone, you know, the Angels, someone really strapped for starting pitching. I could see it happening, but in my gut, I just think he's going to be a Yankee again. I mean, again, I also don't know how many people would want to blow him away with an offer because you really don't know. Like, his elbow is a ticking time bomb. And, like, are the Yankees taking a chance on him by, like, re-signing him? Yes. But you also have the doctors that have looked at his arm and have given opinions on it. You've been with him. He's been able to tell you how you feel. If you're another team, you're taking a chance that, like, he just feels confident throwing. If there, I mean, if there is any – I don't think there is any pain anymore or anything like that. But it is a ticking time bomb. To the, and, uh, you know, the Yankees are the only one with that inside knowledge. So I, think, I just think it's a good uh, relationship for both of them to have. Yeah. I don't think any team is going to take a chance on that. 
The other thing, too, is I keep seeing the same eight or ten teams mentioned as being aggressive in pursuit of starting pitching, and the Yankees aren't one of them. So I kind of think that Cashman's plan is just bring back Tanaka, you know, get back Kerman, and eventually Severino, and that's who he's going to roll with. So I think that – I think if he knew Tanaka wasn't coming back, I think he would be looking a little bit more at some external options, which maybe he will, but I, I think Tanaka's going to be back. I agree. I agree. Um, okay, so now moving on to two relievers. Um, arguably the two best closures in baseball. Uh, first, we'll go with Liam Hendricks um, from the Oakland A's. I, I think he, he led the AL in saves this year, right? Or the whole MLB. Might have, Kirby Yates was really good, but I don't know if he led. I don't know who I, was I, the yeah. final leader. I think, I think he might have ended up leading, yeah. Well, regardless, I think he's one of those players that I could see signing with the Twins. Um, I feel like they're not a team that really makes a lot of free agent splashes. Like they signed Donaldson last year, but they always just kind of bring up someone um, or like it's, it's some type of trade. Like they got Corota this year with that whole Red Sox situation. Um, but I, I don't think they're really a type of team to make it too big of an offensive free agency splash. Cause I mean, they have a lot of good guys in the lineup already, but I think that, I mean, a team like that who's borderline could always use a good arm and, uh, which were, uh, Liam Hendricks would be a great addition to that. And I think that they're going to be the one that does that and make them uh, take the money. Right. So I actually had to go to the Phillies. Their bullpen was historically bad last year. So um, they tried to make a couple trade deadline acquisitions. Uh, they got, who's the, who's the pitcher from the Red Sox they ended up trading for? Who, the Phillies? Yeah, at the deadline. I, I, I'll, I'll put his name oh, in the I know, I know exactly who you're talking about, too. Yeah. I, can't, I can't think of it. Very forgettable. But he ended up being even more of a disaster than the guys they already had there. Uh, so I think, you know, we both said we think Real Muto walks, which just ends up being a brutal trade for them, giving up Sixto Sanchez for two years of Real Muto where they don't make the playoffs. Uh, but that does mean they're going to have a little bit of money to spend that's freed up. I think that they, you know, just keep trying to, you know, pour water on this bullpen fire. And the best way to do that is go out and sign the best reliever on the market and leave that. Yeah, um, I also think that now this uh, coincides with the next one. So I'll just uh, transfer over to Kirby Yates, um, formerly with the Padres, currently a free agent, obviously. Um, my pick for him is the Angels um, because I think they're going to throw money at uh, whoever they can. They're going to bring in all of these free agents. They're going to ask about every one of these guys. Like, they're in on everybody. But they're only going to get, like, two or three of them, and they're going to wind up overpaying uh, for one of these guys. Um, I think one of the guys they're going to have over play for is Kirby Yates. Um, but I do kind of hope that he stays with the Padres because I really like seeing the Padres um, be a successful team. But if he does leave and he does go to the Angels for my pick, I think that the Padres also go after Hendricks. So right. I, don't, I don't think they're going to wind up with one of those two closers, the Padres. I just don't know which one. It just depends, honestly, on probably what Kirby Yates wants to do because their priority is probably going to be to keep Kirby. Yeah, I could definitely see him staying. I'll, I'll follow your pick, though. I think he goes to the Angels. That entire Angels pitching staff is just so barren. They can really – you know, when they missed out on Cole a year ago, I thought to myself, and I wasn't just being a douchebag Yankee fan saying this, so I was like, honestly, good. Like, they can go out and get two or three quality pitchers with that money instead of paying just one and Garrett Cole because that staff really had no one, especially with Otani's arm issues now. And they just turned around and gave that money to Anthony Rendo in a typical Angels fashion. So – uh, Yates would definitely be a guy that could help them start to build a semblance of a pitching staff there. Yeah. Um, and just, and just start, sort of start to be a respectable, you know, like a respectable organization for pitchers. Like I can't remember the last guy that they had that was like, wow, this guy's like a stud and like, like a good leader for young pitchers. And, you know, I, I just feel like that's a good place to start. Like I feel like that's a lot of why a lot of young pitchers like look up to the Yankees right now because of Garrett Cole, like he's, that's really good for the future because I mean, that's going to be a knowledgeable pitching staff like going from Garrett Cole as the leader all the way down to the young guys and bring in that next generation whenever that happens in like 10 years like that's just going to be like a really knowledgeable staff um I think that's why the Nationals are very successful because they've had Scherzer and Strasburg there for so long um so I mean the Angels just need to kickstart something with uh with their rotation and with their bullpen so I'm I'm I would like to see them get one of those guys because I want to see Mike Trout make the playoffs. At the I was just going to say that. <laughs> I'm a Yankee fan, but please get Mike Trout to the playoffs. I'm so Once. sick of reading uneducated baseball fan takes on Twitter of people saying Mike Trout isn't the best player in baseball because he's only played in one playoff series. Like, please, please. please stop. I, I, just make the playoffs a couple times, Angels, just like once or twice. That's all I'm asking. 
Yeah. Spend a little more money on pitching, and that's it. Well, Mike Trout will do the rest. Um, moving on to a, uh, an old Yankee favorite, Didi Gregorius. Um, I actually have my pick locked. I think this is going to happen um, regardless of circumstance. Uh, I think he's going to the Reds. Um, I think he's going to the Reds 100%. They are – they said it was their number one priority um, to get a starting shortstop this season. And I think that they're going to make, obviously, a huge push for Bauer. Um, they're going to try to get one of these other big free agents, um, whether it be someone in the pen or, you know, uh, someone else that we already talked about or are going to talk about. It could be whoever. Um, and they're not going to want to spend too much on shortstop um, because they're going to want to go after a big next year. Uh, when, you know, like all those other big shortstops are going to be free agents. So I think they're going to give Didi a one-year deal, um, probably in the range of 7 to $11 million, you know, whatever they actually agree upon. Um, and he's going to have a good year for them, and he's going to be a free agent again next year. So I, I think Didi's a lock because they either want to go all in on Bauer this year or they want to save their real shortstop contention for uh, next year. I'm I'm with you. I got him going back to the Reds too. Uh, they're definitely going to look to upgrade over Freddie Galvis at that spot. Uh, I th- I've seen them link to both Lindor and Story. I don't know if they end up actually getting yeah. one of them, but but I agree with you. Uh, I do think that they re-signed Didi. I don't know. I don't know if anyone gives Didi a two-year deal or not. I think it's going to be tough for guys like him, Semyon, and Simmons, who we'll get to later. Considering that legitimately, probably the five best shortstops in baseball are all free agents next winter. Uh, so yeah, I think there's a familiarity there. They're going to look to upgrade over what they have now. Um, I think DD does go back to Cincinnati. Yeah, that's my plan. Um, I, I think that's like a lock too, but going on to the other sh- shortstop is Marcus Singian, former almost MVP, although it was surprising, <laughs> uh, when he, when he got that MVP, uh, candidacy. Um, I think he stays in Oakland. Um, I don't see much, see much changing there. I think that he's, he's not really someone that warrants a lot of money. He's a very good player, but I do feel like he's a bit overrated. I feel like he's one of those guys that people try to overrate by calling him underrated. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, Oh, he's so, he's so underrated. And he's like, he's a top five shortstop. No, he's really not. Um, he's a good shortstop. Don't get me wrong, but there's a lot of guys that are better than him and he doesn't deserve the type of money that like someone like Seager is going to get you know like he it's not it's not even close he's a good shortstop but I think that the A's are going to pay him um what he's worth and that's going to be that they have a really good core and I think Simeon's a strong part of that um but I don't think he really is that great of a fit anywhere else I would say the Reds would be a really good fit for him but I my pick with Didi is locked and I think that he's going to want more than just like a one-year uh contract yeah, listen, he's not overrated. He just plays in Oakland, so let's get that out of the way. We've seen what his ceiling is in 2019. You know, he definitely has a high ceiling. He can play well. Uh, but overall, he's nothing special. He's not in the class of the same five guys, that you know, the, the Correas and the Baez's and the Seegers that we're going to see in free agency next winter, like we alluded to with Didi. So I don't know that he gets a multi-year deal or anything longer than maybe two years. Um, but to piggyback off my last pick with Didi, that opens up the Philly shortstop vacancy. So I actually think that's where Marcus Semien ends up. I can see that. I can see that. So you got Phillies. I got back to Oakland. Mm-hmm. Um, next, and this is the one, this is the guy you and me have wanted for years, for years when he was a free agent, um, coming out of Cleveland, Michael Brantley. Mm-hmm. The, left, the left fielder who's going to hit 320 no matter what. Um, he's going to be a contact guy. You know, maybe if we don't sign LeMahieu, you know, he kind of replaces, like, that contact hitter at the top of the lineup. Um, I'm going to talk it into existence. I think he signs with the Yankees. Um, I, I, does it happen? I don't think so. But I'm making – I'm locking in my pick. You can put New York – you can – when you write it down, our picks, you can put New York, York, New York Yankees with an asterisk and saying that it's hopeful. But I am making that my pick because I want it to happen so bad. Okay. I listen. It is my wet dream to have DJ LeMahieu lead off, Aaron Judge bat second, and then be broken up him and stand with Brantley in the three hole. That would be unbelievable to put both DJ and Brantley in the same lineup, surrounded by all these power hitters. It would be perfect. It's not happening though. Brett Gardner's coming back. I've made peace with that in my brain. I made peace with that in my brain months ago. That Brett Gardner. I haven't even 
thought to put Michael Brantley in any of my blogs lately, just because I know it's not happening. I mentioned, I think my blog that dropped today, my Christmas wish list, I literally said, I would like Michael Brantley. I'm not even asking for it for Christmas. It's like asking your parents for like a pony for Christmas. Like it's just not happening. Just ask for a skateboard because that's what you're getting. But where Brantley is going to end up, it piggybacks again off of one of my earlier picks. And like you alluded to, so Marcelo Zuna, I have him going back to the Braves. He's not a great fielder. Michael Brantley is a good corner outfielder. The Braves are going to look to compete. I think that they go and get Brantley to replace Nick Markakis in that corner outfield spot, add to the top of that lineup with Ozuna and Freeman and Acuna, uh, and really look to overtake the Dodgers this year. So I, I am with you. I would love him as a Yankee. I have zero expectation of it happening. I think he's going to be a Brave. Okay, I like how you gave a real pick because mine was absolutely hopeful. So. We have, we have a real take there, and we have a wishful one. Um, I, I, I kind of have a bold take with this next one, uh, Justin Turner. Um, my pick is the White Sox um, because I think towards the end of his career, he seems like the type of guy that wants to play for a long time. Um, and not that his defense is exactly slowing down too much, but I do think he's going to make a transition to the AL, and I think that that's got to kind of start with him transitioning over to a DH. Um, to extend his career for a few more years. Um, and the White Sox are looking for a DH. That's why they're looking at Ozuna. But I don't think – again, I think he's – I agree with you. He's going back to the Braves. Um, but my pick for Justin Turner is to go to the White Sox and be their DH and play some third base when, when needed. Okay, so I'm actually with you. I do have him going to the American League as well. I have him going to a young and up-and-coming team as well. Uh, I just have him signed with the Toronto Blue Jays. They, we saw them move Vlad Jr. to first base last year. I don't know if they try him out at third again now that he's lost a little bit of weight, really slimmed down. But they don't have a third baseman locked in there. Uh, it's a young lineup. You know, you're talking about Vlad Jr., Biggio, Bichette, you know, Teoscar Hernandez, Gurriel. Uh, I think it could help them to have a veteran presence. I think that's what they're looking to do with DJ LeMahieu right now. So if they don't end up getting DJ, I do think they pivot to Justin Turner as a guy they could bring in at a pretty good price, bring in, you know, a still good bat and some veteran leadership to that clubhouse. I think that's a good pick. I think that's a good pick. I could see that. I was, I was reading about that and they're like, they said Vlad is a hundred percent the first baseman slash DH that they want to um, like lock that in for the future. So for some reason, I, I, I never thought he was a bad third baseman, um, but I guess they just don't see it working out long term, and they really just care about his bat. So right. they got him out of there. So I, I can see that. I can see Justin Turner being the third baseman uh, over in Toronto. Uh, next is Nelson Cruz. Um, for no real reason, I just kind of have him staying with the Twins. Um, I kind of feel like he's found a good home there. For a long time, he was a bit of a journeyman. Um, and now he's kind of had a few good years. He makes sense in that lineup because now they're a predominantly power hitting team. Um, mm -hmm. He kind of fits right in the center of that. Um, so I kind for that reason, I pretty much think he stays just based on comfort. They're going to pay him. Um, you know, he is like 41, 42 years old now at this point. Um, I don't think he's going to get like a five year deal by any means. Um, so I, I think they're going to pay him what he's worth for one year, maybe two, which would be a stretch. Um, if not, uh, the angels, I'm sure they'll give him a three-year deal. They are just, like I said, they're just going to throw money at people. They're going to throw years at people just to ha try to get Mike Trout to the playoffs. Um, so my pick is the twins, uh, staying there, but my dark horse is the angels just because they're in, okay, let's try this mode, you know? I was going to say before we were talking about how the Angels need to build a pitching staff, I was going to say watch them go out and sign Ozuna. So, yeah, Nelson Cruz would be – when they already have a DH in Otani, they just get a second one in Cruz. Now, um, I'm with you. I think he stays with the Twins. Uh, he's going to sign one-year deals, I think, the rest of his career until he either gets popped for PEDs again or his body breaks down, whichever one comes first, because that's how his career is going to end one yeah. way or the other. Uh, he was good for the Twins. You know, they put Eddie Rosario on waivers so that – you know, that lineup is getting a little bit thinner. Uh, I think that, you know, for the season he had and, you know, the role he plays in that lineup, there's no reason for him not to keep him around another year. Yeah, I agree. Uh, yeah, the Adi Rosario thing is actually pretty crazy. I mean, they're trying to save, like, like it's like $9.6 million. Like, yeah, like, you guys are, like, a legit playoff team. Like, I don't know why you're getting rid of, like, you know, one of your better hitters. Granted, I was actually going to tweet this, but, like, he's 
overrated. Like his on base percentage has never been above like 323. Um, mm-hmm. So like he's not great. He's nothing special. But like he he means something to that lineup, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm, I'm I'm shocked that they're getting rid of him. I don't know who they're going to replace him with, but I guess that'll be something interesting to see. We're going to see a lot of nickel and diming that's going to surprise a lot of people. I mean, the first example is Brad Hand getting non-tendered by the Indians for a $10 million salary, one of the best relievers in baseball. But we'll, uh, you know, we're going to keep seeing some surprises, and especially today I wouldn't be shocked if we see a couple really big ones. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I'm sure every everyone that comes out is going to be CC at Yankees, every <laughs> single one. Yep. Um, next is Andrelton Simmons. Um uh, potentially the best defensive shortstop in baseball. Um, he's a starting shortstop uh, for people. I've seen some people say otherwise, just because his offense um, isn't anything special. Uh, but I mean, he's lights out defensively. He's one of the best defensive shortstops, maybe in the history of baseball. Um, crazy arm, crazy glove, great range. Um, I do think that, bec- again, because of the shortstop market coming in next year, I think he's going to get snagged by one of the a team you don't really expect. And like, it's not going to make a big splash um, or really be that successful in the future. I think that it's going to be someone who's just like, okay, we want to shore up that left side of the field. You know, someone who's building something. We want to get our, uh, our young pitchers um, a good defensive shortstop. But I think it's going to be someone like the Diamondbacks um, or the Mariners or the Marlins even, I think would be kind of a nice fit um, for him. So I think it's going to be someone more who's not really a contender and more just kind of wants to build the rest of their team right now. Um, and, and having a really good defensive shortstop is good for like a really young pitching staff. So my pick is the Marlins. Uh, but I could also see it being like the Diamondbacks or the Mariners or something like that. I like all those teams you listed as possibilities for him. And I, I agree with you. I don't know that – no one that's going to look at Anderson Simmons as a contender and be like, this is the piece that puts us over the top like you would with a lot of shortstops that are going to be out there in either the trade market or, you know, even even like a DD kind of guy is not going to, you know, can give you more of a bump than I think Anderson Simmons necessarily might in the eyes of certain teams. Um, I think the Yankees are an outside chance for this happening, even if they do bring back DJ. If there's questions about Glaber at short, I think you could maybe justify paying Simmons like, a similar contract to what DJ got two years ago, you know, 12 million a year to be kind of like the fifth infielder utility guy yeah. and have to provide insurance beyond Tyler Wade for, uh, for Glaber at short in case he either gets hurt or, you know, really doesn't perform well there again. Uh, I just have him going to the Indians just because it, it, I think that they are going to trade Francisco Lindor. Um, and if they don't get a shortstop back in the deal, I think they're going to need someone who's there to, you know, that's a major league quality shortstop because the Indians, regardless, you know, even if they do trade Lindor, they're still going to win a fair share of games next year, just based off their pitching staff alone. I mean, Lindor had a down year this year and they still ended up winning a good amount of games and going to the playoffs. So I have him going to the Indians, but yeah, it's, it's a pick where I could really see him going a variety of places. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just a good defensive shortstop. You can pretty much see going anywhere, but I, I like, I like your Indians pick, especially, I mean, it, it kind of piggybacks off what I said based on the fact that, like, it's a young pitching staff. I mean, it's a very well-established young pitching staff, a very successful young pitching staff, but it's something that you want to make sure that, like, your pitchers are getting taken care of defensively. And, you know, uh-huh. with the Indians being so elite with their young pitching, you know, so Simmons is a really good fit there. So I could see him doing that as well. Um, that's so that's fair. Um, I don't have much about Jackie Bradley Jr. I don't see – uh, I mean, like, maybe the Mets, um, just in terms of needing a a uh, a good center fielder. But, I mean, they've always had a good defensive center fielder. Like, I don't think that that's really their focus. Um, I mean, they want someone who's in center field and can hit, like George Springer. Um, I mean, they had, uh, what was it, Juan Lagares for, like, a really long time. And they just, I mean, they're like, yeah, he's good defensively, but, I mean, that's just not what we need anymore. So, I don't think they really pivot back to that. I think that's the only thing that's in in the market for like a really like that's like desperate for an outfielder. So my opinion is he stays in Boston. I just from the things I've been seeing, it seems like he might not be staying in Boston. Like I could see him staying there. I I think they have some kid that that they're supposed to bring up that's a oh, center really? fielder. So I I'm I not know. I'm not positive. I gotta I gotta ask my uh, my Red Sox fan friend. Shout out Red Sox and stuff HVT on Twitter. Um, but no, I it just seems like Springer's gonna walk and. You know, the Astros are going to look to bring in someone, you know, on the cheap to take his spot. 
Uh, I think JVJ kind of makes sense for them. So I guess I, I have him going to the Astros. But, I mean, I don't know. He's always been a guy, you know, from watching him a lot with the Red Sox as a Yankee fan. Unbelievable fielder. He had the one season, yeah. I believe, like 2017, where he had 30 home runs. It was kind of an outlier. And he's really just a, a defense first guy that might surprise you with a little bit of pop in his bat at some point. So I think the Astros – know that their lineup already has a good amount of guys there they can they can hit they'll throw in jbj and you know in center field and, and figure out the rest from there fair um now this is the last one um again i don't have too much on him um, i mean obviously we know a lot about him but it's just kind of like he's a big what if right now um so i think it's he's going to be a big wait and see but it's james paxton um if healthy Nick, I think you said it once. I, I agree on the fact that he's going to come back to New York on a one-year prove-it deal. Um, other than that, I can honestly see him doing something like what uh, Kimbrell did, what Keuchel did, um, and waiting a large portion of the year to sign a contract that he feels is right. Because I, I don't see him signing with a team that's going to be like, other than, other than New York, um, where it's like, okay, we're going to give you $3 million because we don't know, you know, what you are right now. You know, you've been really bad um, and you've been hurt. So, like, we're not, like, we're not taking a chance. So, I could see him waiting, getting, like, 100% healthy, maybe throwing some videos out there of him throwing 100 again, you know, like, put it on social media um, and, you know, kind of going from there. So, my pick is the Yankees right now, but it's a, it's a very just, like, wait and see type situation. So I agree with you. I'm, I'm on the record as saying if he's healthy, I would love for him to take a one-year prove-it deal, come back in New York. Because James Paxton at his best, like we saw down the stretch in 2019, is a really good pitcher. He's not an ace, but he's got great stuff, wipeout slider. You know, he can be a borderline elite pitcher when he's healthy. Uh, I think the Yankees are going to know more than the other 29 teams do about his health at this point. You know, his health issues really over the last, you know, uh, year plus stemming back to you know September in 2019 in Texas he gets taken out of the game which with what ended up being like a like an ass pull was the best way I could describe it um, so I don't know I don't I, I don't get the sense that he is healthy despite what Scott Boris does to convince us that he's all healthy uh, so I, I don't know that the Yankees bring him back uh, I think a team that's desperate for pitching like the Angels or the Blue Jays takes a chance on him I'm gonna say the Blue Jays just because he's Canadian even though they're not going to be playing their games in Canada to start next year, most likely. Uh, but I, I do think that, you know, one of these teams gives them a one or two year deal and says, fuck it. Like the pitching market's thin, uh, you know, we'll give him a shot, see if he can get back to his old self. So I'll, I'll go with the Blue Jays. Although I do think that there's a variety of teams that might take, take a chance on him. And like you said, maybe the Yankees, if, if they figure out that he's healthy, but we'll see. All right. Well, that's all we had in terms of the players. Those are the top, uh, 15, 16 guys that, um, you, uh, you want to do James McCann real quick? Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. I forgot about James McCann. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, in terms of needing a catcher, um, I mean, like, I guess if the Mets strike out on Ray Muto, Ray mm -hmm. Muto, he's my pick, um, to go to the Mets. But, um, other than that, I kind of see him staying with the Tigers. Oh no, he was at the White Sox, right? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I, I it's the AL Central. Did, the whole, uh, did he used to be with the Tigers? He used to be with the Tigers. That's okay. why I thought yeah. that. And that okay. whole a, that whole AO Center, I'm just like, I don't get it. Um, it I, mean, I do think he's a starter. Um, and I don't think he should back up Brondal anymore. But I honestly don't know who else is going to like pay him the money that I think he's kind of worth. So I think he's going to kind of either root for the Mets or kind of default back over to the White Sox. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, I, that's why I have him going to – the Mets, since I obviously have Rimuto not going there. Um, I think McCann is going to get paid this offseason. I think there's going to be a lot of interest in him. I think a lot of teams are going to say, we want to upgrade a catcher but not spend as much money uh, as Rimuto is going to take. So I think there's going to be a pretty competitive market for him. I think he's going to end up getting more dollars than maybe people think. Um, you know, he's a lefty back catcher, you know, hits pretty well. Uh, made a lot of strides defensively this past year. So I think he's going to be a Met, but I think regardless of where he goes, he's going to get paid more than people think. You know who's going to overpay for him? Here, here's my pick. You know who's going to overpay for him? The Pittsburgh Pirates. They have no idea what is going on with that organization, and they are going to overpay for a borderline borderline starting catcher just like they did with Francisco Cervelli. 
So that's my pick, the Pirates. Are you telling me the organization that traded Garrett Cole, Tyler Glass now, Austin Meadows, they're going to make an ill-advised front office decision? Because that doesn't sound like them. doesn't sound like something they do. Believe it or not. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So it's a bold pick. It's a bold pick. <laughs> All right, well, that's, that's all we have. Um, that's everyone. Uh, Nick, what we should do is we should keep a tally on how many we get right or wrong, and, we'll, and we'll, have a, we'll have a prize at the end for whoever wins. Yeah, loser drinks a full glass of milk uh, live on camera. That should be pretty easy, right? No, I think it would be pretty hard. Full, like a full glass or a full gallon? Oh, no, just a glass. I'm not, we're not animals. All right. All right, loser has to drink a full glass of milk on camera yeah all right <laughs> all right lock all right. it in all right um let us know what you think of our picks um again like comment subscribe last take on youtube below the bow sports either or um and we'll see you guys next time later guys see ya